Welcome to the Speak the Language podcast presented by On X Hunt. Happy to have you here for another episode. If you happen to be listening to this on the day that it released, then you know that it's a very exciting week. On one, we're midway through February, which means we're drawing dangerously close to the 2023 spring turkey season. That's exciting for its own list of reasons. This is also the week of the 2023 NWTF convention in Nashville. If you're coming to that show, be sure to stop by the Primo's booth and also the Onyx booth. Onyx will be tied into the Mossy Oak booth. Stop by, say hi. It's going to be a fun show. Also, if you enjoy this podcast, please take some time, share it with a friend, give us a rating on Spotify, write us a review on Apple Podcast. All of those things I just listed off take about maybe a minute to do, and it helps the show a ton. Lastly, before we get into the episode, February 28th, Starkville, Mississippi, Rick's Cafe from 6 to 8 p.m. We are making a return with the live podcast, myself, Jordan, the boys from Spring Legion. We're going to be there to hang out, talk about turkey hunting, give away a lot of cool stuff, uh, do some Q&As, that kind of fun stuff. The crown jewel of it all, if you're into the giveaways, thankful. Uh, thank you to Turkeys for Tomorrow, we are going to be raffling off a Benelli Super Black Eagle 3 20 gauge. It is a uh, Turkeys for Tomorrow gun of the year. Pretty sweet gun. If you come to that show, must be present to win. If you come to that show, you got a chance at winning it. So come out, Rick's Cafe, Starkville, Mississippi, February 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. Now, to today's show, today is honestly, I know I say this probably a lot, but today is truly one of the most unique episodes we have ever done. Jordan and I have the pleasure of interviewing um, our two wives. So Lacey and Jesse have turkey hunted with us. They have seen how we can get during the spring turkey season. As you could imagine, things get pretty comical. So I'm going to quit rambling and get straight to the episode. I hope you all enjoy the show. I think this might, this has potential to be the most unique podcast we've ever done. <laughs> no, we'll see. So Jordan is here, which is not abnormal. It's pretty common. Uh, but as we alluded to in some past episodes, we have two very special guests with us this week. Directly to my left is my wife, Lacey, and then directly across from me is Jordan's wife, Jessie. Here's what we're going to do. Here's, here's the plan, if y'all, are, if y'all are good with it, is Jordan and I were talking, and we, we've talked to y'all some about this a little bit. They're both of y'all's first, how do I word this? Um, introductions to turkey hunting with us were comical in their own right would y'all agree with that Lacey? sure sure definitely okay. definitely. definitely i get definitely comical from Jessie. to maybe most other people well also the uniqueness you did not grow up turkey hunting right Luke? no okay neither did jesse really i mean i heard she's been with her dad a few times like just here and there but he's more of a deer hunter so is your dad so yeah Y'all did not grow up in this whole turkey hunting fanatical no. cult thing. No. Yeah. Well put, Jordan. Well put. So, we wanted to get give Lacey and Jesse the opportunity to tell both of y'all stories uninhibited by us. Like, so, so how, how I had this in my head working out is like, let's say Lacey goes first. We, but y'all can take whichever turn you want. But if Lacey goes first, Lacey tells... Her story about the first time she ever went turkey hunting, just me and her, and no one, including me, is going to interrupt her. She can tell it with as much enthusiasm or embellishment as she wants. But after the story <laughs> is over, here we go. He's already covered. No after the story here. is over, we'll go uh, yeah. back and we'll, we'll retrace our step, steps. Yeah, you'll try to just redo the whole thing. I didn't say that. Okay, I didn't say that at all. Is that okay with the two of you? <laughs> <laughs> we may need a marriage counselor afterwards. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, you do. So who, want, who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? I haven't heard yours, Jesse. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I was trying to think back because it was, it was a while back. You said it was 2018, right? That we were in Florida. That's not the first time we went. I know, but I'm trying to get my storyline. Yeah, that's the first time we went to Florida, 2018. Mm -hmm. So, really and truly, I did not start turkey hunting with Jordan until about our first year of marriage. We were living in North Mississippi, and we lived close to our family camp. And um, I remember going up there several several days after work several days before work some weekends 
um, because I was determined, you know, after going turkey hunting with him previous times that I really wanted to harvest my first turkey. Mm. And um, we were, I guess the first time, it was a weekend, and me and Jordan and my dad were hunting. Um, we had been hunting that morning on into the afternoon, and we went to a place where we knew turkeys had been seen. And um, so we set up. And um, after, again, after hunting hours that morning, um, set up kind of on the edge of, what would you call that? A clover field. So it was, yeah, clover field. Mm. And um, we had been sitting there, and I was half asleep, half not. And I remember kind of my gun just laying beside me. And next thing I know, I hear, Jesse. Well, in a loud whisper. Okay, loud whisper. Because he, he does that really well. <laughs> he does, yeah. Did you hear that? And I was like, no, hear what? And he said, there's one drumming. And then a little bit later, he said, no, there's two drumming. They're coming. Get your gun up. So I slowly get my gun up. I'm like getting excited. My heart's starting to race. I look at my dad. You know, I, I don't even know if he knows what's going on at this time. But um, <laughs> a couple, of, I mean, I wouldn't even say a minute or two goes by. We see these two, I mean, to me, they looked huge these two mm-hmm. huge turkeys just come like running towards us mm-hmm. and i we honestly didn't know where they were going to come out at but they were coming directly towards us either either i moved somebody i don't know they either saw us figured it out and they like came to a screeching halt and they tried to um figure out which way to run they started running into each other knocking each other over <laughs> i mean we you could hear their feet on the ground when they came running up it was just it was that intense and so in the heat of the moment it all happened so fast but i took a shot and i felt like i felt content with the shot i was like i'm shooting a turkey today and um they both ran off into the distance so mm. it was a little disappointed but the excitement of that was just so much fun like just you know Mm-hmm. So anyway, did that. I believe it was that same weekend um, or later that week we got on another turkey. Mm-hmm. He was in, I guess that was an old cotton field. Mm-hmm. And we crawled, we barely crawled, you know, as close as we could to this turkey. He was by himself. And I felt content with the shot and I shot. And the turkey flies away. And I'm like, what is wrong? I, obviously, I thought I was a good shot. But come to find out, after, you know, looking at the gun, somebody gave me a broken choke. Broken. Broken choke. Or what did you say it was? It was It was actually cracked. It was, well, it's broken. Well, yeah, it was yeah. broken. It was broken. <laughs> you set me up for failure. You're supposed to, you know, in my opinion, I felt like this should have never happened but again you know that's what makes it comical and you know so um needless i did not kill a turkey that year um but on down the road we are going to tell the art when we finally oh, okay. yeah, yeah. so in 2018 spring of 2018 we were blessed enough to go to south florida mm-hmm. and um i remember you know when we first saw turkeys there just getting so excited about it and they ended up being jakes and i remember my heart just racing and i told jordan i said i don't know that i'm gonna be able to shoot one because i just get so excited and anyway you know he you know explained whatever but was it that same was it that it was a different day it was the next day it was the next day next okay. morning next morning we get back and um start hunting again and we had we saw some but they just it wasn't you know optimal and i guess it was around lunchtime we spotted some off in a field and i guess it was was two or three of them right Mm -hmm. two and uh and they were gobbling talking back to you or whoever was calling and um i remember us saying you know gosh we're tired and hungry but you know let's take the let's take the opportunity so we or in this field we're belly crawling cabbage palm to cabbage palm trying to get in the right position and figure out where these turkeys are going and um you know we finally find one where we feel like they might you know come that direction we tuck back in the cabbage palm 
Jordan's calling. Um, and the next thing we know, we heard a gobble less than 10 feet from us. And so there was a turkey on the opposite side of that cabbage palm, the same one that we were tucked up in at. So like, you know, we're all there right together. And so I remember Jordan, one of y'all said, there's a turkey on the other side of this cabbage palm. Like there's a different, there's another turkey over here to the right. It was Jordan. Cause I had headphones in from the camera. Okay. And, um, and next thing I knew, I, I, I didn't even have time to respond really, but Jordan said, there's a turkey and he came around that cabbage palm and I moved my gun, which looking back at the footage, I was thankful that the turkey didn't see it because I was like, Oh gosh, I moved my gun pretty drastically, but I ended up taking the best shot I knew how. And I mean, he was what less than 10 feet. Yeah. He, closed. he was on top. I mean, of the shot was, it was evident with the feathers, the, you know, blow up, but, mm-hmm. um, I just remember how excited I was and I couldn't even stand up because my legs, I just, every, from the waist down, it felt numb, you know? And, um, when we finally got over to the turkey and saw, um, his spurs and how big they were, I really didn't know what I had at the time, mm-hmm. but Jordan and Blake were like, Oh my gosh, Jesse, like you have no idea what you've just done. And, uh, you know, so that was a huge blessing to get to experience and, and and after all that and settled down, I looked at Jordan. I was like, "This is this is why those other other opportunities, you know, happened or didn't happen. This is why this was my this was my first experience. This was meant to be." Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I still think about that hunt all the time and how fun it was. And yeah, no so fun. I'm not mad at you anymore about <laughs> what happened. It's fine. It happens. <laughs> Not even a little. Let's go. It happens. Uh, let's, so now, yeah, let's, well, let's go back and rehash it a little bit. There's some meat on this bone. All right, so Jordan. <laughs> so let's go back. Like, we'll go back to the first part. So the first hunt involved. So the first hunt, right, was the one where y'all were sitting there. You heard some drumming and then two come running in. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, any, anything to add? Right, she was spot on with that. Just, okay. I don't, we don't know what happened. They were 20 yards standing just sitting there they were spooky but they were standing there per chance was she shooting the same gun that turned out to have the crack choke yes but well, here's the deal okay. on that is i had just patterned that gun like within a couple of days of her shooting it mm. so something happened with it between the first shot and the second shot sometime or another because after the second shot that turkey it took like four hours to get a shot at that joker. He was in the field, mm-hmm. and we barely crawled and kind of got in front of him. He was just slowly easing his way down the field. Finally got to about 45 yards. She shot. I was like, he, he she finna KO him. Mm-hmm. And shot and didn't even get close to him. And a day or two later, I went back over to the camp, and I shot the gun. I shot it at a water bottle like 20 yards, and it barely clipped the water bottle. Mm-hmm. And I pulled out a <clears throat> big piece of cardboard and shot it and the pattern looked like you're shooting didn't have a choke in it it's just Mm. crazy looking at 20 yards like wide as a door and uh i pulled a choke out and got looking at it and it was had a crack all the way down from the top of the choke to the bottom and i'm guessing it just expanded it you know Mm. so i don't know and this was before TSS days. Yeah. Like, this was shooting uh, heavy sixes. Which is interesting to note, because if it was tungsten, that would be, like, an obvious thing to maybe point it to, because anyone that shoots tungsten will tell you you're supposed to shoot a choke that's rated for that. But yeah, and this was... If it this, wasn't, then This was the... Oh, everybody shot on that shot at 20 gauge was uh, heavy sixes, uh, mm-hmm. federal heavy sixes. Yep. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting deal. I've never had that happen, never heard of it happening, and hadn't had it happen since. Thankfully. What was funny about when I think just to, I don't know, linger on your story a little bit longer. When I think about that 2018 Florida hunt, that's when, so at the time, Jordan and I were so dead set that we could get, Primo's hadn't put a lot of like YouTube exclusive content out. And so we wanted to like show that we, you know, that we could do that. That's something that, that Primo's could do. 
And so we believed in it so much that we like went out there, you know, completely kind of was like a blind. It, yeah, yeah. Blind and we're like, just, just let us take the, the company cameras and we'll, we'll, <laughs> it we'll, was we'll self we'll, funded. We'll make it, we'll make <laughs> it work. So we flew like, if you ever see a, a meme floating around social media about an airline, it's going to be about spirit airlines, yeah. but we flew spirit. <laughs> hey, none of us had more than like $300 in the bank account. We're like, we're going turkey. <laughs> we're going to yep. make, we're going to make this work. <laughs> <laughs> that's I I think about that trip all the time. And like think about it now. Like that was the first time that we had ever been to Blackbeard's and mm. look uh, how yeah. look how awesome Blackbeard just turned out to be yeah, for all seriously. of us. Um you've been there three times. Every time yeah. since no, there was one year you couldn't come. Every twice. other year. She we, she didn't come twice? Twice. She didn't come uh one year because she was prego. Oh yeah. And yeah. other time uh I think, Uncle Bill. Um, yeah, yeah. Uncle Bill had passed away. A it was right yeah. there around that time. But yeah, Blackbeards has been fun. And then true. So you did allude to the. You know, we we're talking about how big spurred turkey that was. If y'all haven't seen it, that turkey that Jesse killed had legitimate like two inch spurs. Like as a monster. We put tape on them, and I'm not one to put actual measurements to turkey spurs, but. Like we did that one because I'd I'd never seen a turkey that big. I'd never seen spurs that big in my life in person. Well, I was like, we should probably actually measure these, and they were over like a fuzz over two inches, both of them. Yeah. It was crazy. It's again to reiterate. I mean, that's why I'm so thankful that for that experience because you know it makes up for the mm-hmm. the two. Disaster. And the next, ne- the next time she went down there, she killed an inch and a half spur. <laughs> Yes. Well, this is funny, man, because I like, I remember, I, I don't know how y'all were feeling, but I felt like we just had so much, I was putting so much pressure on myself because I felt like we had, like we had to come back with something, some worthy footage. And then we do that on like that morning. And I was just, we were so happy and laid back the rest of that trip. It we was, were like, can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, well, we only That's had what like, we said the whole time. Yeah. Could you believe had like that? A, a day and a half too. It yeah, like, it was short. We had very few hours to do this thing. And Jesse was you were full time working then and yeah. had like a day of vacation. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was a quick deal. We were down there for like forty eight hours. It was fun. It was. Lacey, do you have any any thoughts on Jesse's turkey story before you before you wade off into yours? Well, I'm glad she had some redemption there. You know. Redemption's good. Now, yeah. here's the other thing about this. that The misses were in 2014. Mm-hmm. The kills in 2018. Ah. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of hunts in between there, too. This doesn't mean that there's a pattern that has to be followed there, Lacey. I think that no, might have no, been no. what Jordan was alluding to. but No, I'm not saying that, but I, uh, I do remember... This, there's one hunt that Jesse was like, I quit turkey hunting. That one time we it went It was out the to, one where I shot the turkey at 20 yards and missed. And I said some things I shouldn't have said and <laughs> cried. No, and I, was <laughs> threw my gun down. I was done. So you didn't say that Because I thought that something was wrong. I thought a, that I was like, I can't do this. This is too hard. There was another time, too, where I took you off on the National Forest and walked you like all day. Yeah, I would say you walked me several hundred miles that day. Several. <laughs> and you weren't, you did not prepare me for that. <laughs> and, you know, we walked deep into the woods and then we had to walk back. And, and there, so now was, we're getting to the real stuff. This that, is what I wanted. That, that other story that I came home and tried oh to get you to go. Oh my gosh. And, We've told that story on this podcast several times. Well, I'm not sure if you told it the right way. Well, uh, can I tell you the way that he told it? Please. So, I had been in North Mississippi hunting with Wilbur, and I got up and drove all the way back to the office, and I was exhausted. And Jordan says, hey, man, what are you doing this afternoon? I said, man, I don't know. I think I'm going to go home go to sleep. I go, had like two hours sleep the past three days. So I'd really like to go home and have dinner with Jesse. I hadn't seen her much. Wilbur wants to go hunting. You think you could film him? I was like, yeah, yeah, do that. I don't have a wife. You can do that. I, I didn't have a wife at the time, Lacey. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> so I go, and I'm filming. Like, I'm I'm out sitting on a tree with Will filming, and I get a text, and it's a picture of Jordan with a turkey. And I'm like, wait a wait a Hang on a second. Wait a minute. And his 
his recollection was he came home, ate dinner, asked you to go turkey hunting. You said, no, I don't want to. And then he went and was scouting and then stumbled into this turkey. That's what he said. That's what I was told. It's similar. Um, I remember that day getting home from work and you had no intention of going turkey hunting that day. You came home from work as well. And I got supper started because, you know, here I am trying to be the sweet little housewife, prepared dinner for my husband. <laughs> um, and I had, I mean, like, it was actively hooking in, on the stove and in the oven. And, you know, I thought he was coming in from work to, you know, change, sit down, relax. And he comes in wearing his hunting gear and his camouflage. And he was like, I'm thinking about going turkey hunting. And when he says, I'm thinking about going yeah, turkey hunting, phrase. it means he's already going turkey hunting. He's already <laughs> plans to go. He's already has plans to go. Yes. I've learned that and, about Jordan and then in a couple of years that I've known him. It now. is every time. I'm thinking about going to Maine on a turkey hunt. Thinking so, about okay, well, when's your flight? I'm I mean, glad he really. did that, by the way. Maine turned out cool. Yeah. And so, but I remember looking and I was like, no, I've got dinner cooking. And he was like, well, you don't want to go? And I said, well, no, I just got started cooking. I wanted to cook supper for you. And why don't we why don't we wait and go tomorrow? Oh, I'm, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and go out there. I said, okay, well, you know, I had already changed. I was not in the mood. I was tired, and I did definitely didn't want to walk anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, well, you know, thinking he was not gonna kill a turkey. Sure. Like, sure. When you get home, I will be ready to eat. Well, he I got did, home. I did eat. Yeah, after you got home and cleaned the turkey. No, I ate before I left. No, you didn't because it wasn't ready. Mm. Yeah. Because well, I was cooking it. My intentions on that were to go to find you a turkey. You found but, it and you shot it. Yeah. You, well, you, you have to do that. On yeah. that. If you're on National Forest, you're taking a gun if you're going scouting. In his defense, he has stuck to the same story this whole time. Whether or not I believe it, I still don't know. It, it is never varied <laughs> because it is the truth. Mm. Well, while I was happy for you. Because I called you saying I killed the turkey and apologized for killing him. Yeah, because (laughs) I have, I still have yet to kill a bird in Mississippi. And he should I this the added detail is the gun that he killed it with was the shotgun that he said he bought for you to be your turkey gun. Thank you, (laughs) thank you. He has shot more turkeys with that gun than I have. Same, and you have too. Yes, that's true. (laughs) That's true. It was a good gun. That's true. It was a good gun. Well, that's terrible. Well, it's okay. We're family, and you know, it works. We're all happy for each other, and. You know. Yeah, we're all happy for each other. Speaking of, I was a little bitter, but yeah. Speaking of being happy for each other, I'm going to change that segue. Uh, Lacey, mm-hmm. you have the floor. Okay, I'm not going to say. I'll turn my microphone down where I cannot interrupt. I. It's fine. Full. I'm okay, you, I'm going to turn my mic. Which one of my channel four? Turning my mic. Roast him. <laughs> Off I go. Okay. So this was my very first turkey hunt. And to this day, it still was the first one for me because I grew up deer hunting, much like Jesse. And um, that was really about it. And I know Lake had a big love for turkey hunting. Um, and so we have been together for how long? Two? Had it been two years? So. Something like that. We weren't engaged yet, but um, I had been wanting to go, but, you know, obviously with your job, like you went so much, you didn't really have much time to just go for yourself, you know, for fun. So you had finally asked me to go, and so there had been a lot of build up to this moment. You know, I'm thinking it's going to be so sweet, me and Lay, we're going to share this awesome <laughs> moment together, and it's just going to be the sweetest memory ever for years to come, so... Lots of a, um, yeah, lots of hopes here. So, um, another thing is I am not a morning person at all. Um, Blake knows this very well. I'm pleasant, but you know, I don't really get up till about 10 if I don't set an alarm. But anyway, we made it to where, um, we could stay close to where we were hunting so I could get as much sleep as possible. So I'm like, okay, this works for me. So we go, and it's that morning, and he's calling, and 
Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butt in. It was the last day of turkey season, right? The what? Second, to second to last day. Okay, second to last day of turkey season. So really, my only shot here, right? At least for that year. So, um, we start going, and he hears one already, and so he's just like, "Oh, this is awesome!" Because we had like just gotten out of the vehicle, pretty much, and started walking. So, um, apparently, this one in particular was quite the traveling turkey because I would say I'm an active person, go to the gym, all that fun stuff. Um, but good Lord, I mean, I guess going up and down like the hills and stuff, like I was about worn out trying to chase this thing down. <laughs> so anyway, we finally get to where um, Lake thinks we need to settle down right here. So we do, we sit by the tree and um, Next thing I know, I see one out in front of me, and apparently the one out in front of me is not the one that Lake had been calling to the whole time. So I tell him, like, Lake, I see him. I see him. He's like, what do you mean you see him? Because at this point, he, I guess, is on the other side of the tree, so we can't really see him very well. So he's coming out towards me, and um, Lake, since it's, I guess, the first time I had gone, he wanted to make sure he could have eyes on him before I, like, attempt to make a shot. So this became a little bit frustrating because he's just walking towards us. And um, I keep telling him, I'm like, he's, he's getting closer, you know. Like, I, I, think he, I think he's close enough to where I can get him. But um, I think Knox wants to be a part of the I podcast. I think so. Bless him. He's dreaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway, I'm trying to convince him that I probably can get him. He's like, just no, it'll be better. Just just wait till I can see him. So he finally sees him. And how far would you say he was away at this point? You can turn yourself on. 35, okay. 35 yards, 35, 40. Something like that. So he's creeping in, you know. Yeah. So at one point, like he's telling me to get ready to shoot. So get the gun ready and um, backtrack here. Um, the first time I ever went deer hunting with my dad I was maybe five something like that and so I did have this this one time where trying to shoot the deer my finger is on the trigger guard and not on the trigger itself um knowing I've done that before I try to take extra precaution you know because you know you're so excited you know heart's beating everything And knowing you can't do a whole lot of moving, so I did what I could to at least see that it was in the right place. I'm like, okay, I'm prepared today. Um, Lake reaches over. He says he knocks off the safety. I don't know. Happened kind of quick. Anyway, he's telling me to go ahead and try to shoot. So I'm doing that. I'm attempting to shoot, and it had been like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, but it seemed like five minutes. And Lake is like, shoot, Lacey, what are you doing? Lacey shoot shoot lazy shoot it and so he's not being so quiet either <laughs> he's making all these faces right now his adrenaline was up to you. It, it was so if anything i was more calm than he was which is a huge thing i think he was actually surprised at how calm i was able to be during the whole thing he, um but um it got to the point where I'm getting frustrated at him for being frustrated at me because I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I'm like, it's not me. I swear it is not me. And, and this is all why a turkey is standing there? It's just, yeah. And so this is very much a heated moment. So he goes behind a tree and to where a lake can, you know, take a look at the gun and just see, like, what it is that's going on. And I'm able to breathe for a minute because I'm just like, okay, thank goodness he's going to be able to fix it. And I'm going to, you know, be able to have my opportunity, (laughs) I thought. So my, um, I just really thought, you know, what was going to happen was he's going to take it and look at it and fix the issue because I'm not going to know what it is. I'm just being honest. So, and then give it back so I can shoot the turkey because this is the hunt that I'm supposed to kill a turkey, right? Yeah, well, um, that's not what happened. And just before I knew it, like I'm starting to reach over to get the gun back at this point because I'm there's that the, the thought of him even attempting to do that didn't even go through my mind because <laughs> I'm just being honest. It wasn't even a thought that he would ever do that, but to my surprise wow yeah he he shot the turkey and 
I will be fully honest here. I am a very emotional person. Put a puppy in front of me, I'm going to cry. I've done that before. If I'm overly excited, overly sad, just feeling the feelings, I'm going to let it out in tears. It's what I do. Lake has learned that about me. But in that moment, I couldn't even shed a tear. And I think it was because I was just, I didn't even know what to think. I was so shocked. But I, it was very obvious I was disappointed. I don't hide my facial expressions anyway. So I'm just like dumbfounded, just staring at the ground here. And I just see Lake turn and look at me with the biggest smile on his face. I mean, it's just so exciting, apparently. What did he say, though, to you? He didn't say anything. He was just laughing and happy. And he was just like, you know, just, just grinning ear to ear. And then... He like starts to get up and then he kind of looks at me again. He was like, oh, and his eyes get real big and he, he, he knew he messed up. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to say he knew in this moment that he had messed up and was like, oh no, you're sad. Royally. Oh no. You're upset. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. But then he's like, I got to go. I got to go get him though. Like you got to go run after him, you know? So he does that, and then he comes back with the turkey, still smiling, and he's just kind of looking at me, you know. He's, <laughs> he's a little nervous at, at this point, and, and I just, I'm not even looking at him. I'm just like, I don't even know what to do with this. And so he's just asking me over and over and over again, like, are you okay? Are you good? And so anyway, this all in all led up to the first and really only big fight we have ever had that lasted two hours. <laughs> and it lasted two hours because the whole time he was trying to convince me that I was wrong for being upset because we killed that turkey. We. He kept saying we. There yeah. was no we. There was a you because you took it. I can't talk about it. I know. I know you can't talk about it, which is fine. <laughs> Because <laughs> your mind's turned off. But that was like the whole thing back and forth. It's like, Lacey, no, we did it. And the rule is in turkey hunting, I mean, I'm pretty sure he said this verbatim. The rule is when you go turkey hunting, you know, when one of you kills a turkey, you both kill a turkey and you're both successful. But I did not feel successful <laughs> at all. I felt sad. And it was just the whole thing. So he was all upset because he's like, we can't go sit by the tree and just. You know, just sit in the moment. That's what I usually do. A glorious moment where, you know, we just take it all in. And I'm like, I don't want, I'm not in the mood. So anyway, um, now, you know, we look back on it. You know, it's a whole. And laugh. You can look back on it and laugh. A little bitter still because I haven't had my redemption moment yet. But um, but you will. And that's one thing, you know, to, again, to reiterate, you know, our situation, you know, your day's going to calm and you're going to, it's going to all make sense. It's going to be like, oh, this is why, this is why it didn't happen I will for me then. say I have never sniped a turkey out from Jesse. The one that I was cooking dinner, yeah, you kind of did that time. But, well, you weren't with me. Yeah, but, you know. All right, that's, that's all my hand. Does that conclude the story? <laughs> can I turn my mic back on? You can turn your mic back on. All right. <clears throat> you're over biting your tongue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got stuff to say. I know you do. So... He's we get out there. Yeah. We get out there. Mm-hmm. I owl, turkey gobbles, go a little way towards him. He's kind of gobbling real lackadaisical. And another turkey starts gobbling to the north of us. It sounds a little bit more, way more interested. And I said, we're going towards that one. And that ended up being the turkey that we chased all morning. We set up on him four different times. Uh, and we, he was just not really having it much. I mean, we'd walk and we'd sit up and try it. We'd walk and we'd sit up and try it. And we were actually working our way down into the creek bottom where the incident that Lacey just got through talking about occurred. And I remember looking at her and I said, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep chasing him? Because, like, you know, you know, Jesse, you know how Jordan and I can get. Like, we'll, we'll hunt them until, it's, until we can't legally hunt them anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I didn't want to, like, if you were tired and ready to go back, I was like, we'll pack it in because that turkey was kind of being a pain anyway and whatever. But Lacey was like, no, it's fine. It's a pretty day. It wasn't super hot out. So we start walking down towards this creek bottom. The turkey gobbles again. And he'd gotten finally gotten into a spot where it's like he was just found a happy place at this creek bottom. He was just kind of gobbling there consistently. And it being the second to last day of season, there was foliage everywhere. So we had all kinds of cover. 
So, and he had, at that point in the morning, he had tolerated zero calling. Like he would keep gobbling, but he didn't answer me one time. So I said, I was going to like just ease up to him as close as I could get before we sat up. We probably were 120 yards away and he quit gobbling for a long enough time that I was worried I'd spooked him. But finally he gobbles again and he just moved further down the creek. And I said, to heck with it. We'll go sit exactly where I think he was just gobbling from. And maybe, you know how they do, Jordan. Sometimes they come back there, especially if that's like a hangout spot for them. So we sit up there, get Lacey situated with the gun. The gun is loaded and guns, bullet, you know, round in the chamber, all that good stuff, red dots on. And uh, sat there a little while longer and he gobbled two, three times. I said, I'm going to yelp at him. So yelp at him just super soft on my mouth call and when i yelped he didn't respond it wasn't like yelp, yelp, yelp. it was like a call yelp, yelp, yelp. but it was it was as much of a response as i'd gotten all morning and a few seconds later he gobbled again and he was closer i said well heck he may be coming so i told Lacey, i said hey go ahead and situate yourself where we're kind of facing down that creek who knows he may be easing back this way and I had just, no sooner told her that, I'd look back the other direction. I hear Lacey say, I see him. And I'm like, huh? Because the last time he gobbled, he was still over 100 yards away. And I look over and I look at where Lacey's looking. I'm like, that ain't the turkey direction the turkey was in. So we called this other turkey in. And he's walking directly towards us. And I cannot see him at all. There's a giant water oak tree, like big water oak tree. I'm hearing the turkey like i'm sitting there and i'm like i can't see him but he starts to get close enough i can hear him walking and Lacey's like i think i can kill him i'm like just wait just wait because from my point of view i've hunted with enough folks whether it be their first time or they haven't gone a lot bad things can happen so i like to have my eyes on everything that's why i told you to just hang on so finally i see the turkey pops out from behind that water oak tree like i said he's 35 to 40 yards and the turkey is completely chilled out he ain't like super hyped up he's not skeptical he's just on a steady walk looking for that hen he heard and when i see him i said okay kill him and well no no no. let me back up when he was walking in i said go ahead and knock the safety off the gun and i heard her struggling and so i took my hand slid it up the tree reach over and i pushed the safety off the safety gun was off safety and then turkey pops out i said okay shoot him and i hear and at this point the turkey's 35 yards and walking closer and there's nothing between us but air and opportunity so it's not like i can jerk my head over to the left and look and see what's going on with the gun Mm -hmm. i just have to look straight ahead and not move but i'm going shoot him shoot him shoot him and he keeps walking till he gets 25 yards i mean he's all up in our business and he still hasn't gotten worried yet but he stands there long enough and he stops and i'm like i know how this works like he ain't just gonna stand there forever and at one point Thankfully, he never fully like bugged out and ran off, but he was like, something's not okay about this. And he spins around and he starts walking off. And when he goes behind that same water oak tree, I'm like, all right, I can fix the gun. So I spin around and I said something. I said, will the gun not shoot or something like that? Lacey says, no. So I grab the gun and I look at I'm like, and the only thing that went through my head, because this is a Remington 20 gauge 870 pump gun there's there's very few things that can go wrong with that particular gun you know and so i'm like is the gun not loaded like what's happening here and i shut the thing open there's a shell slam it back shut by the time i look back up the turkey is 50 yards away walking away and he's dead off my right shoulder and i just reacted i just threw up boom shot and i was very happy Yes, and I were. and I spun her, and I mean, because in my mind, it's like Lacey couldn't have shot that direction if she wanted to, because she would have had to shoot through me, and the turkey was leaving. I don't know if he feels that far. Every bit of it. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. All I'm saying is, the goal of that day was for Lacey to shoot a turkey. It didn't happen. It didn't happen because you shot a turkey. I did. I did what, I, and I, I, I will say, I stand by my actions. I, I wish it wouldn't have happened that way, but do I do. You? I'd do it again. Because you were very happy that it happened. Yeah. Given the same circumstances, I would do it too. I know. We you were know both. that. I did it to Kevin this year. Yeah. That's Gracious. a whole other story. I know. So all that said, we know where we stand between these boys and their turkeys. Yeah. I wanted you to shoot turkey. That was the goal. But he was gonna he was going to get away. And it was the second of that last day of season. And I did. The I mean, turkey needs a ride in the truck. I did what I had to do. 
I, did, I, I didn't want that to be the outcome. But I mean, why were you so happy about it after? Because oh, we got a turkey. So big. I wasn't gonna be sad. It was like, his first turkey to kill with you. Yeah, that's when I told. Thank you, Jesse. That's when I told her. I said, "I'm seeing the light now." That's what I said. A I said, "This is it, a, but I still like, yeah. like no, like I didn't. I didn't even have. There was no second gun. There was one gun between us, and she was carrying it. The goal was for Lacey to shoot it, and he's leaving and she again you know how it is if you're a right-handed shooter you can only swing so far to the right and the turkey's almost on my edge of the right shoulder and leaving at 50 yards so i just threw up and shot and yeah i was like this didn't go the way we planned it but it ain't like it's a bad outcome we killed a turkey together and i was like lacy you keep saying we we do <laughs> am i wrong participating so and as like the, no, the, I, I do you know how okay. many people have gone too. To go turkey hunting in Mississippi, to have that happen on the first time they ever go. Someone kill your turkey? Someone to see a turkey, to have it, to have that happen. Am I wrong? No. Jesse, am I wrong? I, I mean, no. See, not. thank you. You're not, thank I'm you. not saying, yeah. I mean, thank I'm not you. condoning the whole situation, but, you know, Any, I understand because I know what my husband would have done too. And he would have done the same thing. Any, every turkey hunter I know would have done the same thing. That was not. Plan A, but we landed on plan B, and we still got a turkey out of the deal. That's the way I looked at it. I know. <laughs> I was happy about you it. the good outcome. If it happens again, the probably the same outcome will come of it. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, gosh. So, just saying that. Oh, I know. Here's what I want, and I think a lot of people will get uh, interesting view, perspective, this kind of thing out of it. And I'm going to shut my mouth on this, too, and you say what you want to say, Jesse. But hmm. what has scared it... scared where this is going. What is it like being married to somebody like me, like far as a turkey season? Well... I'm going to is, turn his mic down. What is your you perspective on. on that? You'll leave it on? Yeah, okay, you we'll leave it on. on. We'll leave it on. Um, well, I, I think I realized... I didn't realize it at the beginning, but when I got in your truck on our first date... I looked down in the passenger door and in the, um, in the, in the side of the door, I saw these claws and I turned off my, my flashlight on, on my phone. And I looked at him and I was like, Oh my goodness, what is that? I said, Jordan, what is, what is, what is in your door? And you're like, Oh, those are my turkey feet. (laughs) And I was like, what? (laughs) What on earth? And so, um, I don't even remember that. I, I, re- I remember it in that old blue truck you had. Yeah, you had them all stuffed in the side of the door. And I, you know, well, this was a different truck. Oh, it wasn't his blue truck. He had them in every truck. Well, he had them in the blue truck, in like the little side pocket. You had a bunch of turkey feet down there. Huh. But it was then, not really then. But I remember when turkey season, that approaching turkey season came. I remember you, you know starting to prepare and I remember you looking at me and you were like I just I'm just gonna forewarn you that you know I really enjoy turkey hunting and it's basically um like a disease with me it's a disease fair so and and that's a good way to explain it but I was like okay gosh I mean you know and I I do have to respect that because you know after going and finding out that I really enjoy going, it gives us something to do together. So, you know, wives and girlfriends listening, I do encourage you to go, um, even if it's just one time, because you'll experience something that you've never gotten to experience before. And there's just something about, you know, whether you hunt in the evening or in the morning, just, you know, waking up with the woods and getting to experience it with your partner and, and then getting to see your partner get excited about something uh, that they're passionate about, you know, and, and then sharing that passion together is it's just special. And I mean, I, I'm not upset that you are an avid turkey hunter. I'm really not. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy that. And then on the times that, you know, that you are going turkey hunting, it gives me time to go shopping. So, you know. It's a win-win. That's the sound bite we were looking for. Mm-hmm. There it is. There it is. Well, so I just got a lot of grace this spring. But you're taking me some. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take Lacey some if she'll still go with me. I feel like 
we need to say that Lake is not allowed to shoot a turkey until Lacey kills one first. Well, how's that going to work? Oh, it's not. Oh. But I just like to throw that out there. <laughs> it's like, how would that work? Would that would that redeem him, Lacey? Well, I mean, yeah. But as he said, like, probably not going to happen. The next so. time we go together, there will still be one gun. She'll tote it, and I will duct tape my fingers together. Well, then I can't run a. Hmm. Don't know. It's going to work out. Yeah. I will go and tow the extra gun. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. I knew y'all were going turkey hunting that day. It just hit me. I remember y'all were going turkey hunting. And I remember texting you saying, well, did y'all have any luck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I remember, I, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you sent a picture. You sent the picture. That's what it was. So and, we- and I said, oh my gosh, congratulations. You got one. You're, no, no late killed that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, we still took a picture. Yeah, we, we do <laughs> have we have we have a picture of it's us. a beautiful picture. We have yes. a picture of us with that turkey fanned out. Um, it was after we had gone through our argument, and there. I had felt bad, and then got happy, and then felt bad, and then got happy again. It was a really roller coaster of emotion kind of day for me. But we got through the other end of that little spat, and. She was good, and I was good, and I had drawn the turkey, and so it was a cool day. And I said, "Let's take a picture with him." So, when if that picture, there's a there's story behind that picture. <laughs> it's a great story. I think so. It is. Another thing I want Jess's perspective on because I've never really talked to her about this. Huh. Oh, I'm interested. So am I. And this could be good advice coming from you, or I'm not sure. For like wives, girlfriends, whoever listening to this that is living with somebody, whatever, dating with somebody that is like us and obsessed with it, how do you deal with uh, my grumpiness mm. of 2019? That uh, we had to explain that a little bit. That may need to be a whole other podcast. Could, so, because I realized I I had problems that year. It was a very strenuous year. Lacey, are you familiar with that incident? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, sp- I'll give it a short nutshell version, and then then Jesse can explain her advice on dealing with it. In the spring of 2019, J- Jordan, it was as much as me, him and I joking back and forth with each other. Jordan is a one of the most consistently good turkey hunters that I know. Typically, him oh. being able there you go. Oh. Yeah, typ- oh. Record. I'm glad this is recorded. Typically, him being able to scratch out a turkey, albeit the state that we live in, is one of the I stand by as one of the more difficult ones to do it. But he's normally able to scratch one out. However, in the spring of 2019, my man was riding the struggle. He wasn't riding the struggle bus. He was driving it. He hunted. I don't know how many days in Mississippi and just could not get a turkey killed. Bad luck. Bad strings of luck. Just crazy situations. And. I'm telling you, that dude, I, I've never seen him in that state of mind, and I wasn't living with him. Jesse was, bless her heart. And I was pregnant. Mm. Oh, I was very, I very much, part. I was eight months pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very stressful spring because ever since No and Jordan and living through turkey seasons, he's he's just about tagged out, I mean, every year. He does good. And, yeah. you know, and um, that year I remember, you know, him no you went to florida you killed a a turkey in florida and then you came we came back home and um and you still had not killed a bird in mississippi and i remember it getting midway through the spring to see the turkey season and you were really starting to stress like and i could see it on your face and you know that you had not killed a turkey yet and again i mean i was big and pregnant and miserable and and so you were miserable too but um i remember uh, you hunted just about every day. I mean, you would wake up at three in the morning, and I got so sick of hearing your alarm clock uh, go off at like three thirty because, or three, maybe even earlier. And um, you know, you would you would go, you would hunt wherever you knew to hunt. I mean, public land mostly. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember it was May the first. I was at work. Um, and it was around eight o'clock in the morning and Jordan calls and he doesn't ever call me at that time. And, um, so I got worried and I answered it and I was like, Hey, and he said, Jesse. And I said, what, what is it? And he said, 
I finally killed a turkey. It's the last day of turkey season. I finally killed a turkey. And I said, well, that is wonderful. I'm so happy for you. And, you know, and don't forget it's baby month. You know, we're going to have a baby this month too. And um, so that day went on about three o'clock. I was still at work and I started having some, um, I started feeling what I thought might've been contractions. And again, I didn't know because it was my first time, but I knew I had to, at this point I was working in Ridgeland and I knew I needed to get home to Gluckstadt to get my husband and get my car and get to the hospital. Cause I had called the doctor and they're like, yeah, you, you need to, you need to get your bags and head on. So I remember getting home and Jordan was, <laughs> Jordan was on the phone with, um, somebody and I could hear him, t- you know, go and play right. by play of what happened on that turkey hunt. I think he called everybody that um, Yeah, I don't know who. It was Bob Walker. Okay. Cause he I should have remembered he that. He called me and Brad, and Brad and I were turkey hunting in Kansas on a trip that Jordan was supposed to be on, but he had to cancel because the baby might have came, which, thank God, he did cancel the Kansas that, trip. Yes, I had, yeah, yeah, y'all were in Kansas. I had forgotten about that, but... I remember him like just giggling and laughing and he looked worn slap out. You could just see it, but he was on the phone and I remember saying, get off the phone. I think I'm in labor. Like we have got to go. And, um, and sure enough, you know, we finally make it to the hospital, get situated. And I remember, you know, I remember being very, very having intense contractions (laughs) and Jordan is like looking down at his feet. He's got his little Crocs on and, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? And he said, I have these really bad blisters on my feet. Do you think the nurse could get me some Band-Aids? And I was like, <laughs> I'm sitting here writhing in pain. I never heard that part of the and story. I went, he had, it was bad. I'm not going to lie. He had terrible blisters. I mean, mind <laughs> you, he had been up 3 a.m. that morning and I was still in labor. This was 11 p.m that night yeah and so um it was pretty funny it's fun to look back and and um and and laugh about it but i remember i remember that really well and making fun of him saying gosh i i couldn't imagine you having a baby you can't deal with little blisters on your feet that was a stressful spring it was and not long after our little girl was born he was it was it was 3 a.m i remember and he was still he was still rocking it he was still awake we were you know, enjoying being new parents, and and he was still talking about that turkey hunt that morning. They stick with you. They do. Talk about things that worked out. Maybe you weren't meant to kill a turkey till you May the first. You could kill one the same day your daughter was born. And two weeks later, we were doing it again. Oh yeah. Yeah. He came to me and said, "I think I was, I, I you know, I think I don't even know what I was doing. Might have still been in the hospital." And <laughs> we've been home for like fifteen days. It was for hey, work, I though. think I'm gonna go to Wisconsin. We did. I think I'm gonna. They, yeah, I think I'm gonna go to Wisconsin. You got to test the waters. Do I have a line like that that I use that I'm unaware of, or do I just I don't? No. Usually, you just tell me either that or I think of the idea to ask, "Hey, you have anything coming up?" I Good enough. Test the waters on reaction. If when I say I think. And the reaction's not good. And then I, I was just thinking about it. But you still go. <laughs> That's what's funny. You still go. <laughs> it doesn't matter what my reaction is. Has there been a time where he has said, I think I'm going to be going, where he does not go? There has. I will say there has been. Because the fact many? that there's, I mean, not many. Okay. Not many at all. Um, Always in limbo. Yeah. I will say he, um, there's been a few. Because there's some where he might, you know, not be too gung ho about it, which is rare. But I'm legitimately thinking about it. Yeah, but usually when you come to me, your bags are already packed, so. You got to be prepared. You got to stay ready. Yeah, you do. That is one thing, like, uh, looking at the way we've traveled and done what we've done in the last six or seven years. Well, shoot, man, you've been traveling together six years. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been doing the traveling stuff ever since me and Jesse have been together. And from her point of view, she got a lot of respect. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because, you know, I guess our my first time going with y'all was that Florida trip in 2018 and getting to see uh, the behind the scenes, like what really goes into um, like making a making trying to put a show together all while, you know, hunting. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it, it's just a lot of um, things that need to go hand in hand before that happens. And so, so getting to see y'all at work while also, you know, getting to ex- experience your your so passion. Before you like actually saw that we work on these trips, did you like have in your mind like we're just going out having fun? No. Okay. I was always wondered that like do you do you, like from the outside looking in, does it look like we're just going out there just hunting all the time? And that's just kind of what you think we're doing. No. Mm. I just always wondered that. Nice, fair question. It is. It is. You know, and no, I, I don't. I don't think that. I do. Um, you know, I do know a lot of a lot of work goes into it. And uh, while you know, even while I was hunting, the little bit of stress that I had in trying to on the second Florida trip that we had, where you were far off to my left and Lake was right beside me when that turkey came in on my right, and I had oh, to yeah. wait. Yeah, you know that, and, and just the the timing it where you're catching all the footage. That's that to me was stressful, and so I can't imagine what it's like for y'all, you know, dealing with that on a on a daily basis. Hmm. I don't. I mean, on that end, when I first started doing it, it was stressful, but now it's like I've done it for so long. I don't. I mean, it's still work, but as far as like, I don't stress about it as, as much. Not as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, anything else we need to cover? Well, now's the time y'all any, la- the any any lingering thoughts thank y'all for having us it's about time <laughs> <laughs> um this is gonna be one of the this will be uh, yeah it's a unique episode in its own like people are gonna love me or hate me after this one comes out i think more are gonna love you because you know i think i think there's more women out there who might have an interest in it they just you know you know, but they might not know enough about it or they might not think that they would enjoy going with their partner. But I just, again, want to encourage y'all to go because it's, it, I would say it's a really good, you know, enrichment for us when spring rolls around because it's something I look forward to doing mm-hmm. with Jordan. Yep. Yeah. We uh actually have been tossing around the idea. I don't know if we're going to do it or not. been thinking about it. About what? Uh, doing a slam this spring. You and her? Yeah. You should do it. We're tossing it around. You should do it. Change the subject. February 28th. We'll be at Rick's. Rick's in Starpool. Mm-hmm. So, don't forget to come to there. Yep. Um, Rick's Cafe, Starpool, Mississippi, February 28th, 6 to 8. Uh, we're giving away a lot of turkey calls. Uh, we'll that, give- that gun. That sweet. So I just got a Super Black Eagle three. Mm. It is legit. Yeah, we're thanks to Turkeys for Tomorrow. Yeah, we're going. So like the the rest, if you came to the show last year, last year we had a bunch of giveaway stuff, um, and it was just like you drop your name in a bucket when you get there, and at the end of it we drew names, and um, we're gonna that's gonna be the same process for everybody for all the prizes except for the giveaway gun, because and the reason that we're doing that is like i said turkeys for tomorrow donated that gun so that's going to be a a raffle that you're going to have to buy a ticket for and all the money that we go that we raise from that gun is going directly to turkeys for tomorrow oh that's awesome which is pretty great Mm -hmm. for sure and we got a little bit more uh eye-opening view of how much that stuff cost to have research last week we did yeah check out last week's episode with um Dr. Lashley and Dr. Goldby, if you haven't already. But um, yeah, I think we can wrap this one up, folks. I enjoyed it. It was fun. I did too. Thank y'all again. Yeah. We'll catch y'all back here next time. As always, thank you for listening to the Speak the Language podcast presented by Onyx Hunt.